Fortnite Season X is one that should have been perfect. It should have been the best season, but due to some fatal flaws, it wasn't. This is also a season I really liked as it had several unique positive traits that we have still yet to see in any other season to this day. This season was teased towards the end of the Fortnite World Cup. This created tons of hype and the idea that Fortnite would be going back to the OG days of the game. Funny that we complained about the game not being OG enough back then. Looking at Chapter 5, Season 9 of Chapter 1 was far more like Fortnite than any new season we've gotten in years, but anyway, seemingly that was also the last time we will ever see a new season tease at the Fortnite World Cup. Season X released August 1st, 2019. It brought back OG Dusty Depot, a new Meteor POI that was based on the Meteor that hit the map back in Season 4, a new mech vehicle called the Brute, and a new Battle Pass based on remixed versions of old Battle Pass skins. Now this was a season themed around time travel and was meant to celebrate the journey from the beginning of Chapter 1 until the end. Unfortunately, as we will soon discuss, it seemed to do the complete opposite to a lot of the community. We'll get to that, don't worry but let's start with the good. Now, not a lot had changed with the map day one, but that was for good reason. With the first and apparently last time, Fortnite would be getting brand new POIs each week, or almost each week. This is a crazy fun change that made each week of the season exciting to hop on and see what had changed on the island. Yes, we've seen small changes throughout more recent seasons on the map, but not entirely new or returning POIs. To list some of the map changes that we have gotten, we had Tilted Town, Gotham City, the return of Retail Row in Greasy Grove, Moisty Palms, a combination of Moisty Mire and Paradise Palms, Pandora from the Borderlands, games, the floating island from season 6, oh and who could forget Starry Suburbs, which was a pre-destroyed version of the place many players called Hogwarts back in the really OG days, as I believe that place was removed in season 3. This was an insane amount of map changes, which in my opinion is the most exciting type of change in a game. The map of a game and what it contains is very important to me. Throughout the season, there was a bunch of teasers for these new areas to be added as well. For an example, the Welcome to Paradise sign over in Paradise Palms was changed from this to have a swampy theme in the background teasing the upcoming Moisty Palms POI. To to this day, we have never seen so many map changes in a Fortnite season. I guess it does seem a bit amplified due to the season not dropping with many POIs from the start, but I really did like this method of content delivery. I'm not sure why they never did a season like this again. I'd imagine it may have to do with causing delays for future seasons. This is just a theory, one may say a game theory, but the first two seasons of Chapter 2 were lacking in content updates, potentially caused by the monumental amount of content put into Season X months prior. Now sticking with the good, let's talk new items. We had an absolute ton of brand new items being added throughout the season. We got the Automatic Sniper, Junk Rifts, the Shield Bubbles, the Zapper Trap, the Batman Grapple and Explosive Batarang, and for the first time ever, we saw a legendary tactical SMG only found at Starry Suburbs for reasons we'll get into soon. This new content in combo with all the old weapons that were unvaulted for the first time in years, like the TAC SMG, made for a great amount of content. So with all that content, what went wrong with this season? Well, unfortunately, quite a lot. Why did that kid just go? What? As I mentioned, this was the season that introduced mechs to the game. This was probably the worst addition of Fortnite of all time, and that says a lot because there's a lot of terrible things they've added over the years. This was a two-player vehicle, one person would be on the missiles up top, and one would control the movement of the vehicle. This thing could jump incredibly far, stomp on enemies, and absolutely annihilate your builds. Multiple of them would fall from the sky each game and would be plainly marked on the map for players to get. Usually when you have a problem with a Fortnite item in a season, you could just try to ignore it or counter it, but this thing had no counter. And no, Joke Rifts don't count because you could literally just move out of the way in the mech and you would counter the Junk Rift really easily. So no, they don't count. It had a thousand health, so it was almost impossible to destroy it by the time it took you out. Anyone who was in this thing had a crazy advantage over regular players. By the way, if you want to prove you are a Fortnite OG, you can use code YouTube. It's 4G in the Fortnite item shop. I don't know how that proves that you're an OG, but uh, you know, you could do it. And I would get a small portion of that sale if you do use my code. And uh, yeah, I'd appreciate it. But anyways, this was made even worse for competitive players. The size of teams for competitive of that season was squads, so if a team was good and smart enough, they could have had two mechs to use in endgame. Dying to this thing felt terrible, and getting an elimination with it didn't even feel rewarding. This was just an item put in place to try and lower the skill gap for bad players, a problem Fortnite still struggles with to this day with certain mythic items. Epic refused to nerf this thing for a while. The first quote-unquote nerf was them adding a laser to see where the mech was aiming at. Oh. Thanks, Epic. I love to now know that I have a 100% confirmation that I'm about to die to this thing, rather than being 99% sure. This is also theorized as being a plan change due to the mech having this laser in one of the loading screens you could get in the battle pass. Half the season was ruined because of this stupid thing, and it still bothers me to this day because this ended up being an incredibly hated season due to things like the mech, when it actually had potential to be one of the best seasons we've ever seen with the amount of content we got. I know you're having monitor problems right now, but it's all good. 
charge. You can stop charging. I'll tell you. Okay, thanks, man. You wiped the squad. I have four kills and my monitor's off. Now, towards the end of the season, mechs would land on the ground and explode right away, something they should have done from the start. This period of time without the mech is the only reason I know Season X was actually a really great season at its core. Unfortunately, I'm willing to bet most players quit before we got to that point, so I do understand the hate towards this season. The dumb changes, unfortunately, didn't stop with the mech. Rift Zones were the other problem. On paper, Rift Zones are a really cool idea. Pretty much in any of the new POIs they added or had returned, a bubble would be around the entire area that, when entered, would change up certain gameplay mechanics. Some were okay and kind of cool, like for an example, when entering Tilted Town, a Wild West-themed version of Tilted Towers, it would disable building, because I guess building is a modern-day feature in the world of Fortnite. Retail Row had cube monsters, which at first I wasn't a fan of, but since they stayed within the POI and destroying their spawners dropped tons of great loot, I think they were a fine addition. Same for the Borderlands Pandora POI. It just changed your graphics to have this comic book look, which was kind of cool to see. The Starry Suburbs Rift Zone had the ability to drop loot from shooting stars. This had the chance of getting the legendary TAC SMG, which was incredibly powerful, rare, and only available to get from this POI. But the other zones, the other zones were just stupid. The amount of hype I had to see Greasy Grove finally return after months of it being frozen. All of that hype just to have taco time ruin it. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. I see some players having nostalgia for taco time. Respectfully, were you under the influence of something potentially illegal when you were playing Season X? Because it couldn't have been the taco time mechanic that you thought was fun. When landing Greasy Grove, taco time would play every 30 seconds or so. Now what's taco time? Every 30 seconds when it plays, everyone within the rip zone will uncontrollably dance. You could be in the middle of a fight and have it interrupted by this dumb mechanic. From what I could tell, this made Greasy Grove a ghost town. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. It went from a loved POI in earlier seasons to a hated one. I know it was the fault of Taco Time too, because in Chapter 3, Greasy became a great and populated place to drop again, with no Taco Time in sight. Well, I guess it was technically the Taco Time version of Greasy, but it didn't have the Rift Zone mechanics. Okay, I'm tired of saying Taco Time, Let let's move on. Ed, I got one shot. F***ing TACO TIME! Rift Zones went from gameplay changing to gimmicks as the season progressed. This ruined the hype for many of these new and returning POIs. Moisty Palms, another place I was excited to see, had a gimmick where pressing whatever button it was to crouch, instead of crouching, would make you turn into a random prop from the prop hunt mode. On paper, that doesn't sound too bad, but it really was just a pointless addition that kept players from wanting to go to this new cool POI. The POI was literally just Paradise Palms, Moisty Meyer, and the OG present combined, but in my opinion made for a really solid place to land if it weren't for this prop hunt gimmick. Ending this season, we had the best event we ever got, the Chapter 1 End Event. The music that played during this still gives me chills to this day. The hype for a new map, but the sadness that the current one would have to be destroyed to get a new one. I guess Epic never heard of a map rotation system? Regardless, it worked. The first time at least. I mean, we're on Chapter 5 now, so Epic, just give us map rotations already. So many old maps we'd like to play on again. Thank you. During this time, tons of players feared the idea that Fortnite would never come back online again. And by tons of players, I mean literal 12-year-olds, because anyone above the age of 13 knew Fortnite wasn't shutting down like all the clickbait articles would suggest. It did create a ton of hype though. No other game has ever done this before. Fortnite was offline for two days straight. The longest it's been down ever as future chapters have had their end event downtime shortened until the next day. Speaking of multiple end events, we've had this happen four different times now. I think we are over this by now. I'm sure if you can't tell, I really want a map rotation system. But anyways, I would really love to see a Season X type of season again. Season X really had the potential to be the best season there ever was, as even with its incredibly large flaws, I still remember this season fondly and feel it is a tiny bit underrated. From the incredible amount of content to the incredible event that still makes me a bit sad to watch, this season had a lot going for it. But with many other poor choices made by Epic, it soured the taste of the season for many players, and that's why I think Fortnite Season X is the season that could have been the best, but wasn't.